Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY. Today I'm going to be doing some electrolysis on this old wrench I found. The first thing that we need to do is we need to make an electrolysis bath. We need to send current through the water. Now, water is conductive of electricity, but we need to be able to boost it to make it more efficient. So that's why we're gonna be adding sodium carbonate. It allows electricity to pass through the water more efficiently when we dissolve this in. We're gonna be using one tablespoon per gallon. So for my 10 gallon fish aquarium that I have here, we're just gonna use a heaping half cup to do that. All we're gonna do is just mix it in. And then we're gonna make sure that we mix it around so it's completely dissolved. The next thing we need to do is we need to prep our part to be cleaned. We need to take all the grease, dirt, and crap off of this because that's gonna inhibit the electricity from getting to our part. So go over this with a light nylon brush and maybe degreaser to get all that crap off. I just have some dirt on here so I took a nylon brush and brush as much as I could off of it. Now that we have it all cleaned up, the next thing we need to do is we need to suspend this in the water and make sure that electricity gets to this. So we're gonna hang this by the hole in the top of this wrench. But we need to make sure that it gets a good connection. So I'm gonna take a file and make sure that I can see bare metal because if you have rust on here and try and loop wire around, it's not gonna be um, enough conductivity to get to the wrench because the rust is a inhibitor to that. So make sure you have a good bare connection. All we're gonna do is take some mechanics wire. I have some galvanized mechanics wire. Take it in here, loop it around, and make sure you have a really good tight connection that's really important. So we're gonna twist this down so it's nice and tight. Now all we need to do is suspend it in our bath so I have a metal pipe across. You don't want it to um, touch the bottom, you just kind of want to have it suspended in your bath. The next thing that we need to do is we need to get some anodes. And all an anode is is a good quality carbon steel or iron. And this is what is going to be hooked to the positive side of our battery and it's gonna pull all of that rust off of the tool onto these anodes. So this is sacrificial because these are gonna get extremely pitted, rusted, and eventually deteriorate if you use them long enough. So what I have for this setup is I have two anodes that we're gonna be using, one on the front side and one on the back side of the tank. The reason being is that this works on line of sight. So electricity is gonna go between our tool to be cleaned and the anode. So if we only had one anode in here, it's gonna clean one face of the tool and not the backside face. Because it's line of sight, electricity is gonna get around to the backside a little bit, but not as good as we need it to be. So we're gonna use two anodes, one for the front and one for the back, and that's gonna really clean our tool really well. I have this in a fish tank so you guys can see how it's working, but the best way to do this is probably in a five gallon bucket with multiple anodes hooked around it. That's gonna give you a 360 degree area of cleaning power for your tool or whatever you need to clean. But for um, all purposes, we're just gonna use it in this tank right now so you guys can see the action happening. So for our anodes, we just have a small hook on this and this is just gonna hook right over our uh, side of our tank. So we have two of them. And now we just need to hook it up to some electricity. So what I have right here is I have a 12 volt battery and I have it hooked up to a battery charger. You guys can go straight from a battery charger to your hookups. Um, it just needs to be an old school analog charger because if you have a smart charger and you try and do this, it's going to fall out and trip and it's going to turn off. So that's why I have a battery in between. The smart charger is going to charge my battery 
and I'm going to get straight 12 volts into my tank from the battery. So what we're going to do is we are going to hook up our negative to our tool inside. Now we can take our positive side. I have two leads hooked into one. And for these, you want to make sure that your positive side stays out of the water because if you get it inside, it's going to corrode these leads. For your negative side, it doesn't really matter. It's okay if that alligator clip gets inside the water. It's not going to corrode because it's pulling away from that. But for our positive leads, we want to make sure that they're out of the water. As soon as we hook this thing up, you're going to see bubbles forming around your tool. If you have that happen, you know you're doing it correctly. If you have no bubbles forming, that means that something's wrong. You don't have good connection between your tool or your anodes and your solution may not be the best. As soon as you see those bubbles, what's happening is that it's creating hydrogen bubbles and those are going to be rising to the surface. So you want this in a well ventilated area. So what you should have is you should have a lot of bubbles coming off of this tool. Like I said, those were those hydrogen bubbles coming up. So what you'll get is these anodes will get totally covered with rust. We'll probably let this go for six to 12 hours and Intermittently, you might want to take these anodes out, give them a good cleaning because they're going to get totally gunked up and that's going to reduce the electricity that can get to them because it's going to act as an inhibitor. So clean these anodes once in a while, that keeps this thing really going really well. But we're just going to have to wait and let this thing do its job. This is what it looks like about after two hours. Starting to get a lot of scum on the top, it's still bubbling really good. And it's just, anode is caked with all of this really nasty stuff. So you can see here our anode is really just full of rust. And inside here, our wrench is looking pretty good. There is this really rusty froth on top so that's looking pretty good so what we're going to do right now is we are going to take this part out it's been going for about 12 hours now and we're going to take it out and get it cleaned up so we're going to turn everything off and pull it out So there is a good decent layer of like Black's oxidation on this, but it looks like this is gonna clean up pretty good. So we're gonna take it under the faucet, and give it a scrub with a brass bristle brush. Here's what it looks like outside the bath before we get it cleaned up. So all we're gonna do is take this brass brush and brush this over in some soapy water and just continually um, clean it off. So you can see here that the um, one part didn't get really done very well, and that's because it probably didn't get good conductivity in between this part that was going and the slide. So there was probably some rust in there that inhibited that from getting clean. So we're gonna have to uh, do a direct connection to this part on the wrench. Um, and probably get in here a little bit more, this still hasn't freed up. So we'll go ahead and dip this for a little bit longer. Okay, so now this is the second time that we've done this. And we put it in because we didn't get that one spot done. So we're going to see how we did here. Okay, so it has the same black oxidization on it as the other part did. So we finally got this where we could... Um, we finally got this part where it is nice and black. Now what we need to do is we need to take a brass wire wheel over this or a brush, get this cleaned up, and we'll see if we can't free this up so we can see if it works. 
All right, guys, so that wraps it up. We uh, went over this with the brush and it cleaned up really good. I don't think we would have been able to get these jaws loose without using electrolysis because all the rust and stuff was inside small pockets binding it up. So that's really where this comes in handy with small parts and things where it's really hard to get to. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and head over to my channel for more videos. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you next time.